OK? So it's a consequence of a theorem of existence and unicity of differential equation in the complex domain. And this means that uh, if uh, your DFO is uh, phi, if you take the, the differential of phi and you apply to, to the vector x, then you obtain the constant vector field ddx. So phi goes in this sense. And if you want to have in, coordin in coordinate with the notation a in b for the component of x, you have the Jacobian matrix of phi applied to the colon a b equal the equal the colon one zero. And this uh, thing gives a local description of the leaves because we know the leaves for the standard model DDX. So we have a description up up to diffeomorphism, the description of the leaves in a small neighborhood of O point of O point M is the same like parallel line in a small neighborhood. It's a well known fact but important fact. So it's the same. Now, a little bit uh, more difficult example. So, linear example as previous, and I denote by x lambda, which is a parameter in C star, non-complex, non-zero complex number. So, as we have seen, the flow is uh, this map with uh, two exponential. And I want to describe the leaves. And I, I denote the trajectories of the vector field, the leaf LM. L M passing by M. There are three special leaves. The first is uh, the singular point, the point zero, which is a point of equilibrium. There are two others, which are the, the axis minus the singular point. First axis when you take y, y zero, we say that we see that the flow is x exponential t zero. So you have the first L one zero, which is a C star leaf. And there is another C star leaf. So you have two C star leaf and point. And you have the other leaf, which are general leaves. So there are the leaves which pass by generic point. And for example, there is a leaf for the point one one. And in fact, uh, all, the, all the leaves are exchanged by a linear map of uh, type alpha diagonal linear map 
which it, cha it changed the leaf, the generic leaf with this leaf. It's easy. By homotesis. So I give here the parameters alpha and beta. Here. And now I want to give some exercise for tomorrow. <coughs> uh, suppose that uh, the complex number lambda is not uh, rational, a rational number. Then first exercise, I take, uh, so I take a generic point, for example, one, one, and I say that uh, the application T gives the flow phi T M is an uh, injective one. It's easy, and this implies that the leaf by M is isomorphic to C. It's a curve in C, in C2, which is parameter parameterized by the map here, and which is isomorphic to C. When the parameter is a rational number, P over Q, in this case, the leaf is isomorphic to C star. And the reason is the following. that uh, is, uh, there is a function, which is rational function, which is uh, xp over yq. And this function, the level set of this function, in fact, are exactly the image of the flow, exactly the trajectories up to the singular point. And there is a standard definition for this type of rational function. We say that this function is a first integral of the foliation associated to a vector field. And the difficult exercise is the following, is to describe the closure of the leaves of this linear example, it's not difficult to, you have the parameterization and you have to describe the closure of the image of that application. I give the solution, I give the, but uh, I don't give the argument. It's for you. Uh, when the parameter is a complex number which is non-real, then the closure of the leaves are exactly the leaf, the leaf union, all the three special leaf first, special leaves. That means zero, one zero, il, and Maybe a, a good picture is something like this in I3. Picture of this type. That here you have a plane. And this plane is something like the x-axis. Here is something like the y-axis. 
and the leaves are something like this. Spiral, and something like hyperbola. But if you are able to prove this fact, you see this fact. And when the parameter is uh, irrational, is a, it's a little bit more difficult. And I don't give exactly the statement, but it's something like this. If lambda is, a, oh, for example, I don't remember. Yes. If lambda is a irrational positive number, then the closure of the generic leaf is a real three real manifold in C2. It's possible to to make the, the size. And I, I give an indication I recall that if you have a complex number of this type, then the group uh, generated by this number is dense in the circle S1. This is uh, related to, to the exercise. Tomorrow. Okay. I want to say that uh, in general, holomorphic vector fields are not complete. And uh, in general, the leaves are not isomorphic to C or C star. In general, the leaves are very complicated. I give without proof because it's uh, really difficult. The following case. Take a vector field, X with a polynomial coefficient p and q, which in fact are quadratic form. And I suppose they are generic quadratic form, something like they are independent and so on. Generic quadratic forms. Then uh, this uh, vector field is not complete. So it's easy. But uh, what the following is not easy, really not easy. The topology, the topology of the general generic leaf is uh, something like the Loch Ness monster. And the Loch Ness monster is a, a plane with an infinite number of handles. Something like this. <laughs> See? And this is, uh, they are the solution, finally, the solution of differential equation with quadratic second member. And in book, in old book, it's, uh, you see that uh, the int integration of the, this differential equation by the method of integrating factor is given as an easy exercise 
in differential equation, but uh, anything on the image of the solution. And this is in the, in the thesis of Ferran Valdez, and uh, there is a publication in uh, ergodic th theory and dynamical system by Valdez. And the leaves, L, the, the Loch Ness monster, is dense, is a space C2. So it's a, it's a horrible animal. Now slowly I go to dimension three and other, di other dimension. And at first I give a traditional dual definition. And it's a, when you are in a first square stitch in a L1 in France, and you want to define a line in uh, two vector space, you have two possibilities. You have the data of a uh, uh, vector field, and you take the line, the space generated by this ve vector field, that means some, something like this, or you can take a uh, linear form and take the kernel of this linear form and the level the level set of the linear form in this case the lines which are parallel to the vector v and it's the same in, in the context of differential geometry so when I have a the holomorphic foliation given by vector field X. So I consider, in fact, the direction given by the vector, the line C time X evaluated in M in the tangent space to U. And uh, you can uh, define this line by uh, differential form, an holomorphic one form. And in coordinate, if the vector field is given by this uh, combination R D D Y plus B R D D X plus B D D Y, then you can take the following form B D X minus R D D Y R D D Y and you see that uh, the vector field is in the kernel of omega. In a certain sense, these two objects are dual. So the notation is an uh, interior product of omega by x is zero. So now it's possible to give a foliation by, by the data of a form, of differential form, and the condition uh, on the singularities of the vector field x as a dual you have a du dual point of view, that is the uh, singularities of your form omega, this is uh, the set of zeros of your form, and you have in dimension two, two the singularities are <coughs> isolated points, that means that the co-dimension is greater than two. Yes. So, you have uh, two choices of definition, definition by vector field, definition by form, but this is uh, in dimension two. And uh, in fact, the, the choice 
of the definitions by vector field or one form depends on the context. And I give the example of where you have to work with uh, morphism, for example. If you have morphism, f from v to u, which are open set in C2, for example, then it's better to work with, uh, with a definition by form for a functoriality reason. But it does not matter. In a certain sense, it is also more easy to give the definition of leaves with a po point of view of differential form because I have, I have say, okay, uh, the leaves are the trajectories of uh, vector complex vector field, but uh, what's this? So the formal definition, uh, if you have a foliation given by omega on an open set U, dimension two, the leaves, the leaf passing by M, the leaf LM, is uh, the image of uh, a certain sense maximal immersion, which go from a certain Riemann surface S with an immersion in O open set U privated of the singularities such that the pullback by the inclusion E of the form omega and this is a form on S and you want that this pullback is trivial. This is a formal definition of, of a leaf. And, uh, okay, the existence of the leaves is not so easy to, to, to write in a proper manner, but I want to make a picture for this. And you play with the two formalism, vector field and form. So, if you take a point M, U, you have a local model by the flow box theorem. This is the point of view, vector field point of view. And now you take uh, another small open set in which we have a local model. And in this local model, you have some parallel lines. And I take a third open set with a local model. And in this set, I have parallel lines given by diffeomorphism like this. And you see a, a piece of leaf, piece of leaf here. I take in the red model a piece of leaf and I continue by connectivity, by connectivity and you see that now I'm here and I continue by connectivity and so on. So we have something which is very complicated at the end and it's uh, with this idea of picture you can define properly the notion of leaf. For example, to put, to, to put the definition of S, to put a topology of S, and so on. And you can see uh, this in the notes in French. 
Now I come to dimension three. And it's another thing. So the, the idea in the dimension three is to come with a one form, which is holomorphic on an open set U. And at each point now, you have a plane, which is uh, the kernel of the form evaluated <coughs> at the point M. And this is a plane which pass by M, which is parallel to this kernel. And when you are in dimension two, the same uh, at each point of uh, the domain outside the singularities, you have uh, the leaves, uh, that means local submanifold, uh, passing through any point, M, with uh, following property. I want to make a picture here now. It's an interpretation of uh, the previous fact. You have a solution of the following something like Cauchy problem. You take a point M, you have a direction by M, and in dimension two, it's possible to construct a local, a small neighborhood of M with the following property. Uh, at uh, each point M, you can construct a curve, a local curve, such that at each point M prime near M, then, uh, then uh, the tangent line, the tangent space to the curve gamma is prescribed by the data of the foliation, by the, the vector x or the kernel of the form, if you want. And the problem in dimension three is the, f the same. Is does uh, there exist uh, for any M in small open set U uh, surface V passing by M such that at each point uh, of the surface, the tangent space to V at M prime is prescribed tangent space at the point M prime is prescribed by the data of the form omega prime. And the, it's not possible in general. But if it's possible, we say that the field of direction given by the kernel of the form at each point, we say that the field of direction is integrable because you can integrate this, this uh, partial differential equation. And I give an example which is not integrable, it's a well-known contact form in uh, C3 C or R3, if you want, the classical contact form is not integrable. 
for example, in H3, if you prefer. The contact form is not integrable. And the reason is the following, and it's an exercise. If you take, and for example, it's more easy in the case R3, R3, you take two points in, in the space, then I say it's possible to construct a curve which is a something like this. There are pieces of lines there exist for any choice of two points. There exist a curve, a piecewise linear curve, say gamma, joining m to m prime and such that at each at each point the the tangent of the curve gamma that is a derivative if you want is in the kernel of the contact form and this is a an obstruction to construct uh, an integral sum manifold like this, because if you take two points, if you take two points which can be joined by a path like this, which is in the kernel of the form, then the path is contained in the submanifold V. So this is an obstruction. It's an easy exercise for you. So this is uh, the same here, same exercise. And uh, now to have inter integrability properties, it's necessary to put some uh, condition. And at the condition is a little bit strange. And this condition is called integrability condition. And the definition is the following. So one form, omega, is to be said integrable if the three form omega wedge d differential complex differential of omega is zero. This is a formal definition. And uh, if you have uh, the notes at the ends of the, the the notes, you have a tentative to explain the relation between this. Uh, French definition with, uh, in fact, uh, Schwartz identity of permutation of uh, partial derivative. It's something like, it's the same, in fact. So now, Frobenius theorem, regular thing, <laughs> Frobenius theorem, and tomorrow, Malgrange singular Frobenius theorem. So the classical Frobenius theorem give uh, relate the, this uh, condition, trans condition to 
the integrability of uh, or field of hyperplane. So I have uh, one form on CN, a germ of one form, if you want, or a germ in a small neighborhood of a point. And we consider the, the set of germs of vector field, key, X, which are at each point in the kernel of the form. You have the, at each point, you have the field of hyperplane given by kernel of omega. And you consider vector field such that at each point, the vector field is in the kernel of the form. That means the interior product of the form omega by this type of field, vector field, is completely zero. And we denote by d, d of omega, the set of these uh, of these germs or vector field, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a modulus. And uh, the classical theorem of Frobenius is uh, the following. So I give uh, a form, a germ of one form, at the origin in C2 or at any point, uh, and the following conditions are equivalent. The integrability of uh, the form of the field of hyperplanes and the fact that the space D, the modulus space D, is closed under Lie bracket. That means if you take two vectors, vector fields in the space D, then the Lie bracket is also in D. Everybody know what is the Lie bracket of two vector field? Okay. So this is a <coughs> classical Frobenius theorem. I give a a proof, uh, pedestrian proof, in small dimension, in dim dimension three, in dimension two, there is nothing to prove because uh, there is the integrability condition. You have a three form in a space of dimension two, so the condition is satisfied. So there is nothing to to do. And. The first remark that uh, that is the uh, integrability condition is uh, stable by multiplication by function. That means if omega one form is integrable, then if you multiply by a function h, then the result h omega, the new form h omega, is also integrable. So uh, I work in coordinate and in coordinate uh, my form has this type and the point zero is non-singular for omega that means that there is one of the three functions a, B, or C, which is not zero. For example, C is non zero at the origin. So it's possible to change the form, take the new form, which consists to, I put something like this. I take this new form, which consists to divide by the component, the three of d, dz, and to obtain a 
component which is exactly one. So, so we can suppose uh, that the form are, are this type. And I remark the following. Uh, the, two, the two following vector fields are in the space D of omega. That means that <laughs> these two vector fields are at each point in the kernel of the form. And uh, it is easy to see that, in fact, they are generators of uh, the space uh, d omega as a modulus of the function. And now I compute the Lie bracket of the two vector field. And I remark that uh, due to the form of these uh, two vector field, if you compute uh, the Lie bracket is something a little bit uh, complicated, time d over dz. And uh, if I compute, in fact, the three form omega times wedge d omega, it's uh, a three form, that means uh, you have the volume here, time a function, a three form in C3, C3 is a volume time function, and the function is the same as in the B bracket of the two vector field. So the form is integrable if only by definition, if only if this function, this array function is zero, and that means that uh, the two vector field are commuting vector field. So you have this. Uh, Application, integrability implique commutation of the two special vector field, and this implies it's easy that the space D is closed under Lie bracket. So this, it's a it's a proof with the end with coordinates in dimension three, and you can it's easy to repeat the same proof in any dimension, in fact. Eh? No, excuse me. Thank you, thank you. There is another presentation of uh, probably new theorem, which is the following, the same assumption. Omega is a germ of <coughs> integrable form at the origin. And the theorem says that, uh, and this is, uh, everybody knows uh, in this form, maybe, there exist two functions, two holomorphic functions, u and v. Uh, the u is a unit. That means that the value at the origin is not zero. The second function is a summation. That means that the differential at the origin is not, is not zero. And uh, such that the uh, form, in fact, is uh, collinear to differential of uh, the second function. So, if you think uh, of foliation, it's easy to think that uh, the leaves are associated to the foliation given by omega. The leaves are locally the level set of the function, the submersion V. So, I give another proof of the same type as previous in small dimension. Dimension two, there is nothing to do because it's uh, you take the dual point of view. You have vector field associated to omega, and you apply the flow box theorem. And the flow box theorem says that uh, 
vector field up to the homomorphism is a constant vector field ddy, dd, ddx, excuse me. And this implies that uh, initially your form is annihilated by the form annihilates the vector x and uh, in, the, in the new coordinate the form an annihilate ddx so omega is, is parallel to ddy. And take uh, u, take uh, v the transformation by the flow box of the coordinate coordinate y. And in dimension three and other dimension, you take uh, the same uh, strategy as previous. You take a presentation of the form with a coefficient one on dz, for example, and you take the two commuting, commuting vector field associated with this presentation. And uh, have you have seen the integrability condition of the form omega is equivalent to the fact that the two vector fields are committing vector field and it is easy to to show that uh, there is for such two vector field commuting vector field and independent vector field there is a local model which is uh, the pair of the two constant vector field ddy ddx and this is a flow box for two vector field two two commuting vector field it's, it's not very hard. So at a, as, a as a consequence, the form is collinear in these new coordinates to dz. And this proves the theorem. OK. Now. Now, holomorphic foliation on complex manifold. <coughs> now I consider uh, M connect complex manifold. The, the dimension is uh, N. And I suppose that uh, the dimension is greater than 2. And formal definition of uh, nolomorphic foliation of F on M is uh, given by several data. At first, uh, we have an open covering. And in each open UI of this covering, you have local model of a foliation. So you can take a polydisc in, in charts. And on each UI, I give a holomorphic integrable form, omega y, uh, with uh, singularities of co-dimension greater than 2. So it's in the de definition. Now the dimension is big, 3, for example. And compatibility condition, so the, in each UI, you have a, a foliation given by omega i. So foliation Fe, if you want, F given by omega y. And on another open set of the covering, you have another foliation. 
and you want to have a compatibility condition which says that the two foliation are coincide in the intersection of the two open set. And this condition is equivalent to the following. It's uh, on each uh, intersection, there is a unit which is defined uh, on the intersection ui intersection with j such that uh, omega y is uh, g i g g i g time omega g so you obtain in fact an, an element uh, for remark to the foliation is associated line bundle given by the data of the J, J, J charge. So the compatibility condition says that uh, the restriction of the first foliation Fi on the intersection Ui intersection Uj is the same of the restriction of the second foliation to the same set. We have a definition of the singular set, which is the following, which is exactly the union of the zeros of the form omega y. And it's a co-dimension two analytic subset of M. And there, is a, there are definitions of the leaves which are maximal immersion of dimension n minus 1, <coughs> complex manifold L in M by E, such that locally the image of L is a union of local leaves. I, I want to explain this fact. So, you have a n minus one submanifold, which is in general a little bit complicated. Something like this, for maybe. In general, it's an open manifold. And uh, you have the application Y in uh, M. And uh, this, uh, the image by the emission E, cut the small UI or small, small open set with a local model, for example, given by Frobenius theorem. If you are outside singular set, suppose that in, in a small polydisc, there is no singular point. In this small polydisc, you have model given by Frobenius theorem, second, second presentation, and these are sub n minus one local submanifold. And you want that uh, the image of L cut this uh, small open set along the, the leaves, maybe something like this. 
maybe an infinity of intersection of connect component. That mean this, no, this. Maybe a connection with a Frank exposition. For example, uh, on, an, on the affine space, C, any holomorphic foliation is given by a global holomorphic one form. And this is a consequence of Carton B theorem because this type of co-cycle can be trivialized. So on CN, foliation, codimension one foliation are given by one form, global, holomorphic. But uh, almost nothing is known on the foliation on the space CN with singularities of with or without singularities. We don't know quasi we don't know anything. I want to speak on projective uh, spaces as an example. So I take a foliation of the space on the space PN. And this foliation induces a, a foliation on a PN. Pn minus one, I don't remember. Pn. So here you have Pn. Here you have Cn plus plus one minus the origin. Here's the projection. Here you have the data by form omega i, and you can take pullback by the projection of the open covering. This is an open covering of this space. And the pullback of the form. And you have a foliation on Cn plus 1 minus 0. And there is a theorem by Carton, Henri Carton. It is an ingredient to prove Cho theorem for the manifold in Pn, which says the following. Something like this, which it says that uh, the first cohomology in the unit is zero for n greater than two. It's not true for n one. And with this theorem as previous, you can uh, define the pullback foliation on Cn plus one by a global one form by trivialization of the co-cycle. And now you have a form global on Cn minus Cn plus 1 minus 0. And by Hartog's prolongation theorem, that form is in fact global. It can be extended to the origin of Cn plus 1. But uh, the fact that uh, the foliation on this space Cn plus 1 comes from Pn implies some compatibility condition. And these combat compatibility condition are invariants by homotacy. There is a compatibility between the action of the homotacy multiplication by 
number t. And if you work a little bit, if you, you can see that it's possible to define a foliation by a special form, which is given by coefficients which are homogeneous polynomials of the same de degree with uh, some condition. One of the condition is the so-called Euler condition, and that condition means that uh, the lines, the lines say that if you take a line in this space, this line go to a point. So all points here are in leaves, in a leaf, and here that means that the, the, the leaves are ruled manifold. That's the invariant by multiplication. And the, you have the int integrability condition. And this is a, a variant of uh, Shaw theorem for uh, subvarieties in the case of foliations. That means uh, holomorphic foliation on Pn are in fact algebraic in the sense that they are def defined by homogeneous form. And in the third exposition, I will give some description of foliation in small degree and Brunella, some Brunella conjectures, difficult conjectures on this foliation. Maybe another example on uh, the right, the right which has a quotient of Euclidean space Cn by lattices. And the first examples are linear foliation. Uh, what's uh, linear foliation? Uh, you take in Cn, foliation give a, given, I give the leaves of the foliation that are the parallel, hyperplane parallel, that means given by a constant form. Take uh, complex numbers, not all zero. Take a form of this type on Cn. Integrability is obvious because this form is closed. And uh, the leaves of the foliation are the hyperplane with direction this form. And if you take the quotient of Cn by a lattice, that means uh, The quotient by subgroup of rank 2n. And this is the basis of the R vectorial space Cn. And this uh, gives a foliation on the, the torus. And the leaves are a little bit complicated. So these leaves are called uh, linear foliation on the, tor on the tori. And there are, there are in fact, special uh, tori, just five minutes. I denote by lambda the, the lattice. Uh, is it possible to see or no? What? In fact, uh, when the lattice is generic, you can consider the field of uh, meromorphic function of the torus. And uh, in general, the this, this field is trivial. It is a constant. If you take a generic uh, 
lattice. There are no non-constant holomorphic functions of the compact torus. And I have a small proposition, it's an exercise, which says that if you have a foliation on a torus, generic torus, that means uh, with uh, no non-trivial holomorphic function, then the foliation is a linear foliation. That means uh, the projection of the foliation by parallel hyperplanes in CN. And the proof is easy. I denote by P the, the natural projection. And you take the foliation on the torus, so you have a, a data of covering and a form in each open set of the covering and so on. And you can lift by P to obtain a foliation on CN. Uh, this uh, foliation is uh, by the previous remark by the Carton B theorem, this foliation on CN is defined by a global holomorphic one form. So I denote by omega tilde this form. And I suppose so, that the first function A1 is not completely zero, for example. And I modify the form omega tilde to consider a new form, which is now the meromorphic form. Yeah. So I take the meromorphic form, which is a previous and a division by a one, and the first coefficient now is one. And I say that uh, this form is a unique meromorphic form with the first coefficient one and which is collinear to the initial form omega tilde. And this implies that the meromorphic function a k over a, a1 are invariant by the lattice. And uh, the, so this is a Meromorphic function with which is lambda invariant, and this implies that it's, this is a function on the torus. But all function on this type of torus is constant. So uh, the, cost, the quotient is uh, in C, and this is a proof of this uh, little proposition. That's all. For, okay.